As you've heard, we're here for the launch of Police Week here uh, in Toronto, and I feel so honoured that I was asked to speak today because uh, I know firsthand uh, the importance of having a good police service in the city and the community where, where you live. Um, you know, it's usually a foreign experience for me to be on this end uh, of things. I'm usually back there around this time taking notes frantically uh, and trying to compose um, you know, an objective story most of the time, right? <laughs> um, but today I'm here to share a very personal story, something uh, that is very near and dear to, to my heart, and, and there are going to be some personal anecdotes in what I say today. So I should say uh, I'm not speaking as a journalist today. I am speaking uh, as a private citizen in this, uh, in this city. Um, recently I made a phone call to 32 Division, which is in, in my neck of the woods, and for the first time it wasn't a phone call uh, about crime statistics or, or murder investigation, although those are, of course, very important stories, but it was, uh, it was a phone call about a crime, about a sexual assault uh, that happened in 1988, so it's a historical case. And, uh, and it's a sexual assault that happened in a different country, so it's an international case, so it's already got its own challenges, of course. And the sexual assault was very personal to me, and 22 years after the fact, uh, I was able to gather up the courage uh, and the strength to come forward and report the man who assaulted me. You don't usually see a journalist crying, <laughs> um, but you get to see one today. Um, I was 12 when it happened to me, and, uh, and he was 44, and just the thought of, of that age difference is, is enough to get me emotional time and time again. Um, you know, I always find the term uh, stranger danger to be a, an interesting term, not only because in my case it wasn't a case of stranger danger, but because uh, I think over the years we've learned that uh, a majority of cases of sexual assaults on, on children specifically uh, are not cases of stranger danger. They are people who are known to the children. Often they are relatives or neighbors, uh, certainly people that, that they know, teachers at, at times. In my case, it was a, a person uh, who I trusted very much. He was the father of a very close friend of mine. Um, and, uh, and I trusted him a lot. Uh, I think that's very important to drive that point home. Um, and what he did to me that day was, was violent and it was cruel and it left behind uh, a lot of mess for me to clean up. And it took me a long time to, uh, uh, to actually speak about it because there was so much shame and, and guilt affiliated with what, ha what had happened uh, on that day. Um, it happened two weeks before we moved uh, as a family from, from Israel to Canada. And um, for years after the incident, I would think to myself, well, why didn't we move three weeks earlier as though there was a possibility that I could control the outcome of, of what have, would have happened? Um, and there were a lot of uh, firsts that were stolen away from me on, uh, on that day. Um, things like, you know, often my friends will talk about their first kiss and uh, um, I can't look back at mine and, and say it was a pleasant experience because it wasn't. Um, and little things like that that really add up to a lot. Things that teenagers often will take for granted. I didn't, I didn't really have the experience that the average teenager had when it came to that. Uh, the recovery itself uh, took a lot of years. Unlike some physical Ill illnesses, I often tell people that uh, when it comes to uh, sexual assaults on children specifically, um, you, you can never tell what kind of damage it's going to cause mentally and, and emotionally. And I had no idea until uh, years down the road. Um, but you know, there is some hope here as well because uh, because I sought help uh, as an adult two years ago. Uh, I started uh, I started my healing journey, and uh, I'm 34 now. That's a lot of years of sitting with this uh, this information and uh, and letting it eat away at you. But when I did seek help, I, I found that here in Toronto, uh, there were a lot of resources for people who were going through what I was going through. Um, and there are alliances that I've been forming over the, the last uh, few years that are very important alliances um, that are going to help a lot of children out there. Uh, for me, it began with a community agency. <clears throat> here in Toronto, we've got a great um, organization called Boost, and it's run by, <clears throat> sorry, an incredible lady called uh, Karen Kennedy who makes uh, a huge difference in children's lives. They, they provide services to uh, children who have been abused and to their families, uh, court services as well. 
uh, and, and they also do uh, prevention and intervention programs, and, and that's way, where they collaborate with Toronto Police and other police forces as well. Um, in fact, just last week we were at the launch of a school safety program at St. Timothy's Catholic School here, here in Toronto, and it's a program that's available to kids from kindergarten right up to, thank you, <laughs> right up to, uh, to grade eight. Uh, basically, a police officer will go into the classroom uh, and provide information on safety and, uh, and also the importance of uh, using your voice. And I think that's the piece that means so much to me because let me tell you, if 22 years ago a program like that existed in my school, uh, I don't think that the incident itself would have been prevented, but, but I do think that my healing process would have looked very different than, than it turned out to to look like. Um, 